Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Masood Odia, and I'm a, a professor in the um, School of Engineering at Wentworth University in the Mechanical Engineering Program. So I'm um, here again with another example, uh, kinematics problem, rigid body kinematics. And um, I have a video similar to this um, for a while now on uh, YouTube. But uh, I, this is a little bit different uh, where you see this bar at this instant, we are given the velocity of point A uh, to be four meters per second. So these are given VA is four meters per second. Clearly, A is confined to move vertically down and acceleration of A is six meters per second squared down. So that means point A is accelerating, okay? Um, and then in the problem that I showed you, um, earlier problem that I've uh, done on YouTube, B actually is moving horizontally. So this time B is moving on an incline. So I want to see how things will change. So our objective, so these are given, right? And the objective is to find uh, at this instant, remember all the things that we do in kinematics is only good for one instant. So at this instant, if these are the uh, velocity of A and acceleration of A, you wanna find acceleration of point B, the other end, and ang actually angular acceleration of this bar at this instant. Now, when you do acceleration analysis for general plane motion, remember this bar is going through what? combination of translation and rotation. Okay, so general plane motion. So whenever you do um, uh, acceleration analysis, the, what you need is first the angular speed of your bar or any body, any rigid bodies that, that are involved. So the first thing we have to do is to find omega. We need omega to proceed. It's very important. A lot of people start doing the problem by trying to do acceleration analysis. And because they haven't calculated omega, they get stuck in the middle of the, the process. So what's the best way to find omega? The best way probably is to use the IC method, the instantaneous center of zero velocity. So what I'm gonna do actually, I need to it's fine here, so I have room to show you where the IC of this guy is. So you guys recall that in order to find instantaneous center, we need to have velocity of two points. And again, I have a video on this also, uh, very similar. So I need velocity of two points. So let's go ahead and say, okay, velocity of uh, point A, as you could see, is like that. And look, B has no choice but to move along this 30 degree incline. So that's velocity of B. So remember, this is just a velocity analysis. The, the idea is to just find the omega. Uh, we need that. So the rule is what? Draw perpendicular line to velocity of A at A and velocity of B at B. So this doesn't look too good. Yeah, but where these two, so this is 90 degrees also here, right? Well, to, to, to perpendicular line, two velocity of A at A, 90 degrees here, and then 90 degrees here. Where they intersect, the two lines intersect, that's the instantaneous center. So what that implies is as if this body, think of it as a triangular plate, it's pinned here, and that's your pivot point. So the body is rotating about the axis through C. So velocity of C is zero, it becomes the instantaneous center. So now having a uh, velocity of A to be four meters per second, if I could find this dimension CA, then I'm also, because you see velocity of A is equal to what? Is equal to R omega in pure rotation. And this is not a pure rotation situation. And what is R? R is always from the center C to the point, CA times omega. So all I need is CA in order to find omega. Now it turns out that we know that this is 60 degrees guys here, right? This also happens to be 60 degrees. Therefore this is 60 degrees. So this is becoming an, an equilateral triangle here, this ABC. 
Therefore, all the sides must be equal. So this is 0.6 and this is 0.6. So if you look at the geometry, you could figure that out. All right, so uh, if I put four here and a 0.6 here, then omega is equal to four divided by 0.6. And that I believe is 6.67, rounding it off 6.666, so on. That's radians per second. Clearly, this body just looking at velocity of A and B is rotating like that. So it's rotating counterclockwise. Okay, so remember guys, you need to calculate omega in order to be able to proceed and do acceleration analysis. Now I wanna warn you about People, when they use the instantaneous center for the purpose of finding omega, you have to basically forget about instantaneous center then. All you needed to determine was the omega here, which you got 6.67 radians per second. Then forget about this picture. So if I were you, I would just erase this picture now completely, or just, of course, if you can't erase it, just go to another page and just forget about it because this point C has no significance whatsoever now. What we have just determined is that, yeah, omega of this guy right now at this instant is 6.67, fine. But that point C has no significance in terms of acceleration analysis, okay? All right, now, how do we go about finding acceleration of B, sorry, this was acceleration of B and alpha of the body. All right, so the way we do that, let me go, just go back to black here, I guess. Um, okay. So you start with writing the uh, relative motion equation. You say acceleration of B, let's translate with A. I know what acceleration of A is, it's six meters per second squared down, plus acceleration of B relative to A. What is this part? This part, the way we interpret that A is acceleration of B relative to A means find acceleration of B as if A is fixed. So what that means is that you draw the bar, and I lose this, but let's say this is our bar at this instant, right? This is bar AB. Right? If I make A fixed, of course A is not fixed. And then what would be acceleration of this point? Now, I know this part is rotating uh, counterclockwise physically, but I have to make an assumption about its angular acceleration. So I'll assume that alpha is also in the same direction. The, the approach I'm using guys is a scalar approach. You could do this by vector approach if you want. Right now, I'm just gonna get the magnitude, put the direction as an arrow next to each term here, okay? And you've seen the videos like this before uh, that I've made. All right, so remember, acceleration in pure rotation, if A is fixed, is two components, a normal or centripetal, and a tangential in the assumed direction of alpha. And if you go ahead and figure these out, which, is, which should be easy, so A and is what? I'll do it right here for you. I mean, so a n is r omega squared. R is the length of the bar, which is 0.6, and the distance between a b. Omega, you see, we needed omega that we calculated. So this, I believe, becomes um, uh, 26.64 meters per second squared. A sub t is r alpha. R again, 0.6, alpha, remember, is unknown. But look at the direction, this is very important. The direction of this guy, so remember, this is 30 degrees. This is coming down at 30 degrees, right? So this would be 60. And then if you figure out this angle, that would be 30. So you need that when you plug into this equation. So here we go, guys, this is very important now. Acceleration of B, I'm gonna assume that we know physically B is moving down. But is it accelerating? We don't know. We assume it's accelerating. So here we go. I saw acceleration of B going like that, right? That would be what? That would be a 30 degree angle because you know the incline, right? You see, you have this angle. 
All right, equal. So this is what I mean by scalar approach, right? Put the magnitude and put the direction next to it. Okay, acceleration of A. Acceleration of A was given uh, six meters per second squared down. So six down. And then look at these two guys. You have a normal component, right? And a tangential component. So that's, and just leave them alone the way it is. You don't, don't have to combine them. So a 26.64 at a 60 degree angle, right? Like that pointing toward the center point A. And the tangential one, which is 0.6 alpha, we figured the angle should be like that, 30 degrees. And then from here, guys, all you have to do is to equate, uh, look at this equation here, this one, equate the horizontal and vertical component and solve for the two unknowns. So for example, if you look at the horizontal component, I'll take that to be positive, for example. So what's the horizontal component of AB? Is AB cosine 30, nothing from the six, uh, a negative 26.64 since it's moving to the left, cosine 60, and a positive 0.6 alpha uh, cosine 30, right? So there are two unknowns there. So I'll go to the next equation, which is equating the vertical component. So I pick this to be positive. So I have minus AB sine 30, right? Since the component is down, right? Y component, a negative six from here. And then a positive 24.64 sine 60 and a positive 0.6 alpha sine 30. Okay, use a substitution method or any method you want or solve the two equations simultaneously. You end up actually getting a negative answer for both of them. Acceleration of B comes out to be negative 24.79. Give it a try, see if that's what you get. And alpha also comes out to be negative 15.7 radians per second squared. Now, the interpretation is what? Both acceleration of B and alpha of the body are decelerating. So you could write it like this, 24.79. Remember, we assumed acceleration of B was downward because you know physically B is moving down, right? But then it's decelerating, so its direction should be like that. Of course, at the 30 degree angle. And then alpha, and that's meters per second square. And alpha, uh, remember we assume this guy to be what? Uh, Counterclockwise here, you see this red? That was an assumption. We were wrong. It's going to be clockwise. Okay. So I hope you like this video. Uh, I would appreciate if you leave comment, uh, like the video, subscribe, and I always come with different uh, videos on different topics, mechanics of materials, dynamics, vibrations, statics, and so on. Again, as always, thank you very much, and I'll see you soon.